Welcome to our journey in the heart of Bangkok, where amongst the towering skyscrapers and bustling streets exists a hidden world of small communities. Today, we delve into the lives and the living conditions of those living on minimum wage here in Thailand. Today, I'm going to be visiting a part of Bangkok that I haven't been to before and hopefully get a glimpse into the realities of life for the hardworking people living in these smaller communities. Throughout this journey, we hope to gain a greater understanding of how much these people earn, what the quality of life is like, and whether they can actually afford to survive on that amount each month. To get to where we're going today, we won't be taking the sky train that's above us or the subway that's below us. I'm going to be taking the regular local train to get a real feel for how these people commute each day. The minimum wage in Bangkok is just 363 baht per day for a full day's work. This equals less than $10 and the people need to find a home, pay their bills, food and support themselves and their families. Thank you. Right, well, that was really fun and only two baht. Amazing. I took that train to Urupong Station and the area we're going to be exploring is just around here. This community here is essentially sandwiched between a train line and a highway. I'm on the train line at the moment. I discovered this place using Google Maps, the satellite view, and I could see a whole cluster of buildings and houses here. You can tell from the rusty tin roof that that's going to be one of these smaller communities and I wanted to come down here and get a real understanding of what life's like here. my big time <laughs> what is your name? Ah, my name is Adam. Uh, Adam. Chuprampon. Pon? Chuprampon. Chuprampon. Oh, okay. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, me too. Oh, yes. Very good. Very good. Ah, so this is great. Just like that, we're in. So I've bonded with these lovely gentlemen. They both have the same type of motorbike as me, which is actually a kind of rare motorcycle here. So it was cool. I went to chat to him about the bike, and they got chatting with me, and they're going to show me around here, which is really cool. Oh, you? Oh, very nice. Uh, what is your name? Kunchola. Min. Min. Ah. Lot, lot. Lot? Min, lot. I'm to Adam. Ah, Adam. Nice to meet you. Adam. I'm from Australia. The boys showed me around their homes and a few of their neighbors to show a variety of living conditions. They also introduced me to a bunch of their friends also living in the community. Filming inside these houses was a challenge for me because they all had someone inside and I didn't want to film people inside their homes. But it gave me a great understanding of the cost of living in the various homes amongst this community. These guys were super friendly and even trusted me enough to ask for some advice on the work that they were doing on their bike. Now, 
taking a look at a community like this, you may think that everyone's poor or they don't have anything, but that's not the case at all. Just behind me here is one of many motorcycle parking stations scattered throughout this community and all around this area. You can see from taking a look at the motorcycles, these aren't just any old rundown, beat up motorcycles. A lot of them are actually quite new and quite nice. Exploring this particular community is super fascinating. There's the full range of housing here. There's people squatting and sort of informal housing here. There are some nice middle ground houses and there's some quite large sort of two, three story houses that are quite nice through here as well. And as I take a walk through, it's really interesting to see. A lot of them are very different inside to what you would think that they're like from the outside as you walk past. The tricky thing for me, unfortunately, is there's people inside most of the houses, so I'm not really comfortable to film inside the houses, but I am taking a little peek as I walk past. Walking around here, chatting to the locals and finding how much people pay to live here has been really, really fascinating. It's the full range here, as you would have seen, the housing is also the full range here. There's the squatter type houses, as I showed you before, and they go all the way up. There's some really nice multi-story houses here that look quite large. So how much does it cost to live in a community like this? As I said, there's the full range. So a lot of the places I actually found out people were living in there informally, essentially living for free. And in those places, the smaller houses seem to go for around a thousand baht a month. The places slightly bigger were around 2000 baht a month. And then the bigger houses, surprisingly, some of them were as low as 3000 baht per month. Obviously the price goes all the way up from there, but it was to me really fascinating to see just how cheap the rental prices are here. Hello. Hi. Hi. This behind me all along here is housing and it's a little deceiving for how it looks. It's basically that's the storage out the front, the house is behind. So it doesn't look that great from out here, but it's basically just a storage area. Now, what is the inside of these places like? And that's the most interesting part. As I mentioned a couple of times, the outside doesn't depict what the inside is actually like. And as I take a peek, as I walk past, the majority of them are quite nice. They've got everything that you would need inside. They all have electricity, running water. The majority of them seem to have a little aircon box out the front, but I can see inside they've all got TVs, couches, bedding. Something interesting that you'll find with Thai culture is I'll see little Buddha statues and things in just about all of the houses as I walk past too. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So I came to grab some lunch at one of the little local places and I got a chicken pad krapau, the krapau guy. It's basically chicken, basil, chili. I got a fried egg with it. And one of the things about when you come to these smaller communities, the price of all the food drastically goes down. So this is about half the price of what I pay in the area that I live. This was 40 baht, which is just over a dollar. Right, awesome lunch. Let's continue on with this adventure. 
Now, just doing some really basic number crunching. Let's just say you wanted to live in a community like this. Let's say one of the 2,000 baht per month homes, because they're quite nice. There are the 1,000 baht per month and they are livable, but I think the 2,000 baht and up are the nicer places to live that you would actually be happy to come home to. Now, assuming that you're working for 363 baht per day, it would take you just five or five and a half days to pay a full month's rent. So when you actually think about it like that, that's not bad at all. 363 baht is quite a low number and it doesn't seem like much or it doesn't seem like it would be enough to live. But surprisingly, with just five and a half days work, you can pay a full month's rent, which is actually not something that you can say for a lot of other countries around the world. This little machine behind me here is where you can get fresh drinking water from. This is one baht and you'll get 1.5 liters of water. And these machines are scattered all throughout the neighborhoods here. You will notice I use the word community a lot. One thing I've learned from speaking to the locals here is that the reason there is so much diversity within these neighborhoods is that as the people start to make more money, they don't move to other more expensive neighborhoods because all their friends and family are also living there. So why leave? These people choose to live where they do. They all hang out together and I could really feel that sense of community just walking through. So this particular community has a cool little outdoor playground essentially. There's a basketball court, this is a soccer thing behind me here. There's gym equipment, slides, swings, and deep fried ice cream. Hello! In case you haven't seen me sweating today, it is 46 degrees in Bangkok. There's a heat wave here at the moment. It's brutal. So what do you have? You can. Hello. The next thing to factor in is bills. How much you'd be paying to continue to live here each month and some basic things to understand. The electricity bills that most people would be paying here are around 500 baht per month. They could go up if the people have an aircon unit. But for me, as an example, in my condo, my aircon is on basically 24 seven. I pay 2000, at the most 3000 baht for a full month of electricity. This is of course a luxury and not a necessary one. The majority of the people here have actually got the windows open and they don't use the aircon at all. So how does the electricity work? And this sort of varies from community to community, but basically from what I can see in this one, they've all got their own individual power. Sometimes they'll come into a switchboard, I guess, and each house will have a meter out the front that tells you how much electricity they're using. The other more bigger places are all sort of independently wired. And in the case of some, especially around the informal ones, basically they'll all sort of share electricity from one point and they'll split the bill or however they decide to do it at the end of each month. So I have come to a little local market nearby to get an idea of how much some basic clothing costs. Let's see shorts and singlets here, 25 baht. Really cheap. Things like socks, this is a 10 pack and you get that for 50 baht. Got shorts, 55 baht. All these ones, 55 baht. Pants are 60 baht. These are on sale, 50 baht. Tonai ka? Tonai ka. Okay, kofun ka. This shop has all the lightweight jerseys that Thai people, the Thai guys like to wear these. They're 100 baht each from this store. So just nearby is a local market that I've come to check out and this place is bustling. Everyone comes down here in the afternoons and you can buy everything here, fresh meats, vegetables, there's things for your home, basic things like shampoos, conditioners, soaps, is all available here and it's much cheaper than you'll find at the regular supermarkets. Hello. 
<laughs> now, a question I am always asked about these communities is, are they a safe place to live? And the short answer is yes, they're actually incredibly safe. You may think, judging it off face value, that they look dangerous or that people that don't have much are more inclined to steal from each other, but that's actually not the case. It's actually the complete opposite. As I take a walk around here, you can see just about all of the motorcycles have their key in the ignition. All the houses are open, the windows are open, the front doors are open, even if the people aren't inside. I think a big part of this comes down to the sense of community that I keep talking about and that everyone looks out for each other, everyone knows each other. So it's just not something that they even think of doing. Something that I think is worth noting here is that not everyone is renting. A lot of these homes are family homes that have been passed down from generation to generation. So they don't actually pay rent each month. However, there are still quite a few people renting houses in this area. So what are my final thoughts on life in these smaller communities? It's fascinating to me, you know, Bangkok is such a large, such a massive and diverse city. There's 11 million people that live here and everyone lives in their own different version of Bangkok. One thing that's universal when I visit these smaller communities is just how kind and friendly everyone is, especially to me. I'm an outsider, I'm a foreigner walking through, exploring these people's neighborhood, walking through their front yard essentially. And everyone is just so warm and friendly to me, which is really nice. I mean, generally speaking, the people in these communities, <laughs> they're friendlier than the people in my condo. And while it may seem like they have far less, maybe they actually have more. <laughs>